So garlic, one of the absolute classics of a backyard garden and everyone really enjoys growing this plant. I mean, we grow tons of it here. So I'm going to show you today when's the best time of harvesting garlic. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So my name is Motin Ali and this is my family garden. And on this channel, we grow all our fruits and vegetables in our backyard. And we also keep chickens and we keep a few fish as well. So if you like that sort of thing, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell so you get the notifications for when I put a video out. So garlic's one of those really long season plants and it takes about eight to nine months to mature. So I like to plant my garlic towards the end of autumn, early winter. So typically I'll go for around mid-October, late October to plant my garlic. And that way the garlic has a chance to establish itself and push out a little shoot before the winter sets in. And it really needs that cold for the garlic bulb to split. It needs about a month of temperatures below five degrees Celsius for the garlic to split properly and form cloves. We grow tons of garlic. I'm gonna show you my garlic beds. I mean, this year I've not grown as much garlic as I normally grow. Last year I harvested probably about 60 kilos. Um, so I'll show you the garlic that I've grown and I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about how to tell when it's ready to harvest. I normally grow garlic from supermarket bowls because I grow a lot of garlic. And this year I've grown a lot of hardneck varieties. And these, you can tell they're hardneck varieties. One of the easiest ways is that when they mature, they send out these scapes. And this tells us that the garlic's forming underneath. Now you can, with a garlic, is snap the scape off and take this and eat it. And it's like a garlicky asparagus. You can fry them in butter, eat them like that, or you can chop them up and use them just like garlic. I mean, the good thing about garlic is the whole leaf, everything about it is edible. So you can use the whole thing and eat the whole plant and make use of it so nothing goes to waste. I planted my garlic mid-October last year and I planted it using a technique where I, where I don't dig the beds. I put down a layer of uh, compost and I sheet mulch over that with cardboard and I pierce holes through that and I plant through the cardboard. And then that cardboard, it prevents weeds and it prevents splashes from water onto the leaves of the garlic and causing disease and stuff um, so if you don't know what i'm talking about i'll leave a link for the video up here do go and check it out it's a really interesting technique of growing garlic i've hardly had to water my garlic all year one of the good reasons is my roots i put a picture up on my facebook group my roots go down about eight inches at least and they go down and they're pulling up water from deep underground and they're staying and they've been staying healthy all the way through They've been in the ground now since mid-October and they're in uh, and we're into towards the back end of June now. So it's a good time to pick, look at the garlic and see if it's ready to pick. You might hear some people talk to you about planting garlic on the shortest day of the year and harvesting on the longest day of the year. That might work for when it comes to harvesting time, but I think you should plant a lot earlier than that because garlic needs that extended growing season. I mean, for us, if we planted on the shortest day of the year and planted harvested on the longest day, that would mean we're only giving it a six month window. And I think it needs a little bit longer than that. The ideal time to start looking at your garlic ready for harvesting is when you first see a couple of leaves browning on the outside of the garlic bulb. And what I'll do is I'll pull one of the bulbs up and I'll show you. You can pull these if, you, if your soil is quite loose and it's quite easy to get hold of the bulb. It's, they'll pull out quite easy, but it's better not to pull them. It's better to you know, dig them out like this. Oh, there's an absolute beauty. So there's an absolute beautiful bulb. That's a really healthy sized bulb. Um, and with this bulb, you've see, you can see there, one leaf has wilted away and another leaf is wilting away. And you're starting to get another one browning up here. Each one of these leaves matches a layer around the garlic bulb. So if you let too many leaves go to get, get brown, you're not gonna have much of a protective layer around your garlic bulb. So when one or two leaves start going brown, that's the ti ideal time to pull them. So that's what we're going to do now with this bed and with this bed over here. We're going to start pulling all this garlic up. Don't treat garlic like you do onions. Like I just showed you with the leaves and the wrappers outside the garlic bulb. With the onions, you can leave them and each layer of onion will form, um, will form a protective layer as it dries. 
but with garlic you haven't got that option you haven't got that many layers to give it that protection don't wait for the garlic plant to fall over before you start harvesting because you don't need it to do that uh, so we're going to start pulling all this garlic i'm going to get the kids out and we're all going to get stuck in because they love doing this so i did a video specifically on interplanting and what we've been doing when we've been harvesting our garlic is we've been taking out a bulb every time we need it and what i want to show you just down here is i've been planting squash because this bed is going to be used for squash once once all my garlic's out so i've got squash a squash plant growing in there already and now it's going to have free roam as this garlic comes out yeah. so go on did you get one for me yeah okay so we've got some white cloves of garlic oh these are like ones that actually haven't split so these are a couple of weeks th this bed is a couple of weeks behind my other bed and these have formed a single large clove so they have not actually split compared to these so you can see the difference so we'll save those separate and we'll start pulling it so guys so the way i want you to do it is you take your garlic you dig a little bit away and you lift And when you lift, you'll hear that sound. Can you hear it? Yeah. Can you hear it? Yeah. So you'll hear that crack. And when you hear that crack, that means the roots are broken and you can pull your garlic out. And then... So that's what that sound was. Yeah, so you don't want to damage the roots, you see. Uh, or you don't want to damage the stem because it won't store as well. So if you guys carry on with that, and Dadu can come and help you as well. So you guys work on that. On me and Dadu will do that side. So... Can one of you get the wheelbarrow? You get the wheel. So I did a video specifically on interplanting. And wanna pull these garlics out. I'm gonna reveal what I've got underneath here. So just next to this gar garlic. There you go, you can see them now. There's my tomato plant. Oh, there's white garlic. This, see, this is more white garlic that's actually split quite nicely. Let me show you one thing here. Now, when you get a garlic like that, that has gone way past the time to harvest it. You don't want to let it get to this stage because when it gets to this stage, this bulb is not going to store very well. You can see what's happened here. Is all the outer wrappers have dis composted down and they've all disappeared. So all I'm left with is a single garlic clove. So if I'd have left this much longer in the ground, these would have actually started sprouting. And what you would have seen is lots of little plants start coming out of here. So I've caught this just in time for it to be saved before it starts sprouting. It won't store very well at all, okay? So what we'll do with this is this is gonna go in the pile for us to use straight away. So these two garlics obviously were planted a little bit too close together. <laughs> and what's happened is, You've got two plants coming out of the same space and that's why they've squished up on one side. But they've grown quite well. I mean, those plants would have, those plants would have taken a little bit longer. Oh, here is a lovely one. Look at the size of that. So it's, we do well with garlic here. I mean, yeah, we do really well with garlic here. That's a nice one, isn't it? See the... See, that's the reason you don't pull it because I've just pulled that and damaged the neck. So that's not going to store well either. And that's going in the use straight away bucket. And one of the things that I've been doing with this bed is as we've been going, is I've been adding more different, I've been adding different mulches. So as, so as the cardboard that I initially put down has disintegrated, I've been adding more mulches on top. So here's some grass clippings and some more cardboard boxes. So it's suddenly become really overcast and it looks like it's going to rain. That reminds me that when you're going to harvest your garlic, make sure you've got a couple of dry days before you pull your bulbs because you don't want a load of, you don't want the garlic to have taken up loads of fresh water and that to be in the plant when you're going to try and store garlic because it'll just make it that more difficult to store garlic. That's a tip you won't hear a lot of people talk about and it only comes from experience. So there's a little, there's a good one for you.
So we're having a little snack. We've got some peas. And we're picking straight off the pods. Okay. Back to garlic. So we've pulled all our garlic and now it's time to get it up to the house ready to store. So let's get this up. There's garlic coming from everywhere. <laughs> it's not bad at all. I mean, it's not bad at all. So I'll come back for the rest in a minute. So now that this bed is clear, you can see what I've already got planted in here. I've already got squash, loads of squash plants planted in. And I did, I did a specific video on interplanting that covered why I did these, um, why I did these squash plants the way I did. So all I'm going to do is I pull my garlic. So now I need to take care of this bed and make sure the soil in here doesn't dry out because the heat that we're having at the moment, a couple of days of that heat and this soil will be completely bone dry. And the other thing that to note is because of the way I've been pulling the garlic, I've disturbed the roots of these squash plants already quite a bit. So now I just need to get some soil in around the base, make sure that they're properly firmed in and give them a good water so that they so they don't start wilting after the because it's, the disturbance of the soil is, is going to be quite traumatic for them I mean do go and check out my video on interplanting it's, it's really full of good information I get asked quite a bit, how do I keep my soil protected and how do I keep it in good condition? Now, all I'm gonna do is all the weeds that, so, so there's some cardboard left over from the mulch that I initially put down. I'm gonna leave that where it is. There's some weeds that have, uh, that I've pulled out. I'm just gonna stack that up and leave it in one pile and let it all rot down in one place. That's fine. So we'll just leave that where it is. I'm going to get this soil covered with as much organic matter as I can get and what, whatever organic matter I can get. So I've got some grass clippings. I've just cut the lawn and this is all going on. If I didn't have this, uh, cardboard, leaves, wood chips, whatever you've got, just get the soil covered straight away. We've di yeah, we've disturbed it quite a bit and we don't want it to dry out. This will protect the soil, it'll keep feeding the soil and it'll give my squash some it'll give my squash some protection to romp away now. So I'll keep covering it like this and you'll see this bed completely covered um, with either grass or cardboard or anything that I can get my hand or get hold of so the soil doesn't dry out. But let's get back to the garlic and we'll start curing that. Now before we store this garlic away, this garlic needs drying. It needs to cure for a couple of weeks, preferably not in full sun, so, but it needs to cure somewhere dry. And these, book, these boxes are really, really good for it. I mean, you can store them in these boxes and then stack these boxes. Uh, these, these are sort of supermarket tray boxes. You store them, like, store them in these and then just stack these boxes. So once they've dried a little bit, I'll cut off the roots and then I'll plait them. Even with these hard neck varieties that grow stick scapes, it's still possible to splat them. It's a little bit more difficult, but nimble hands and you can do it. And if you've got a really tough one like this, leave that one to go through the middle. You can just braid them. And then the way I, the way I braid them is I'll just braid them like that and just add another one every foot so often. And then I'll end up with a massive long string of them. We'll just hang them in the shed. If you're gonna hang, garlic or if you're going to hang onions always hang them upside down like this because that way fluid drains away from the stem especially if there's water in the leaves or anything like that you don't want it to store you don't want it to drain towards the bulb and cause additional issues around rotting and fungus and stuff like that so right now i'm just going to store as many i'm going to try and thin, get them nice and spread out thinly and we'll cure them i mean putting them on top of a rack or a pallet or anything like that is perfectly fine I mean, 
we've got a lot of garlic here. I mean, it's not, it's not anywhere near what we normally pick, but we've got a lot of garlic here. I'm happy with the harvest this year. And the, and the thing that I'm pleased to report is there's no sign of garlic white rot in that bed. So that's one thing I am very happy about. If you want to know how I treated my beds for garlic white rot, do check out my Patreon page. I've done a detailed video on there on how I've gone about treating my garlic white rot. Uh, I mean, that's one of the best ways to support my channel. If you want to do support our channel, uh, you can become a Patreon. I hope you found this useful. That's a lot of information about harvesting garlic, storing garlic and protecting your soil as well. So you've got three for one. So I'll leave it there for this one. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah.